But yeah, so that's basically uh, what's going on right now. But I mean, if I was gonna, you know what I'm saying, wife somebody, I mean, you guys already know what it is. I mean, you see my streams, you know how I get out. Um, I could say, um, you know how you like look back on people and you thought, you know, you know, you love them like that. But me, like when I look back on a million chicks, I'm not like, oh man, like, ah, damn, well, it was like my third, like, nah, look at this is like the first authentic true bliss, like a chick I wasn't embarrassed to be with, um, somebody I thought was gorgeous head to toe, like the full nine, like no imperfections. But I didn't know how to handle that shit back then. Like, Greetings, people of Earth Realm. It is I, Shang Tsung. In my previous video, I showed undeniable proof that the Lancaster loser known as Low Tier God, real name Dale Wilson, is a 39-year-old man-child that can't accept the truth about his age and consistently lies about it. Near the end of the video, I outlined the reasons why he would want to lie about it, and I alluded to one other reason that I didn't elaborate on. Well, it's time to elaborate. I want to mention up front that the tone of this video is going to be much more serious than my previous videos. While Low Tier God usually acts like a clown and his childish antics are typically amusing, recent events have made me realize that the topic of this video is much more serious and urgent than I originally thought, and I wanted to treat this subject with the tone that it deserves. With all that out of the way, let's get into this. The clip you just saw is from an old LTG YouTube video titled, What Really Happened? This video featured LTG and his ex-girlfriend, Elisa, doing a mukbang and discussing some of the details of their past relationship. For those that don't know, a mukbang is a style of video that features people eating. The word mukbang means food show in Korean. Although they were no longer a couple, his ex was well known to his fans and trolls, as she had been featured in many of his videos and live streams during the time they were together. In fact, the videos that featured her were some of the most well-known and most infamous LTG moments up to that point. You didn't even lose. I don't get. I said you didn't lose yet. <laughs> Hold on, you have the eyelash on your eye. It's gonna go in your eye and it's gonna hurt. Don't move. Oh my goodness, I'm just trying to help you. Fine, I hope your eye starts crying. I tell you, I ever find out who you are at a tournament, I'm gonna beat the living dog shit out of you, motherfucker. I swear to God. You're not putting hands on that one. Tell me that again, dude. <laughs> what you gonna do? Tell me what the fuck I'm gonna do. I'm not fucking around. You're not putting hands on no one. Dude, get the fuck off my stream, dude. Seriously. <laughs> I'm not playing. <laughs> Play your game. Relax. Get the hell up. Don't tell me what the fuck I'm gonna do. Exactly. I was laughing at. There's a thing nothing you, you guys could say. There's nothing you guys could say. I would never tell the story. Her ass was in dead room for laughing at the shit. I'm Ain't sorry. Nothing funny. You quiet. You fucking up my motherfucking match. The fuck wrong with you, dude? Perhaps the best known of these moments was from August 1st, 2018, when Alyssa called LTG on the phone during a live stream. But in a typical boneheaded moment. LTG neglected to mute his microphone. As if that wasn't bad enough, he also put the call on speakerphone, so his livestream audience ended up hearing their entire convo, which was captured and saved for posterity, much to LTG's chagrin. Here is an excerpt. The fuck is your problem? What? The hell is your problem? You, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Ain't nobody prioritizing shit. It's a goddamn couple of days at Eva. What, on Instagram? I did read about the whole Valentine's Day thing and all that. Why would you block me on Instagram? 
You're just acting way too extra for no fucking reason. I don't know why you would do this a day before. What? What? You're fucking inconsiderate ass fucking child? To summarize the entire call, Alyssa was distraught because LTG was going to EVO, the annual video game tournament, without her, and by going on the trip, he would also be missing their anniversary. As I said before, this clip became rather infamous, and it gave birth to the meme that LTG chose EVO over his girlfriend and their anniversary, ultimately resulting in their breakup. In fact, this incident is one of the primary things addressed in the mukbang video, and presumably it was what they were referencing in the video's title. They would claim it was not the central reason they broke up, it was but one of many reasons. This failed to stomp out the rumor, however, and even today people still say they broke up over the Evo incident. Anyhow, not long after LTG posted the video to YouTube, Alyssa would begin a new relationship with someone else. This information came from her social media posts, which were seen by both LTG's fans and trolls who had been following her from the time she was with LTG. Her new relationship, along with her social media posts about it, would become a popular topic amongst LTG's trolls. As it was clear to them, LTG still had strong feelings for her, something he even admitted to in the clip at the beginning of this video. In fact, it wasn't only trolls that were talking about it. LTG's real fans were also curious because the two were supposedly on good terms, with Alyssa even stating they were friends. So people weren't tiptoeing around it. They were eager to hear what LTG had to say about her new relationship. Well, it soon became apparent that his warm feelings about her had changed where before he was praising her as the only woman he thought was gorgeous from head to toe, the only woman he was proud to be seen in public with, and the only woman that he would consider marrying, now he was referring to her as just another bitch from his past and trying to avoid discussing her entirely. He began saying things like, he doesn't believe in love anymore, love is just a Hollywood fantasy that isn't real. He even went on a bizarre rant where he claimed men shouldn't call girls their exes because they don't deserve a title, claiming that instead of ex, they should refer to them as bitch I used to fuck with. Okay, so first off, let me go ahead and break down why I don't consider any bitch my ex. So the reason why I would never consider any bitch that I used to fuck with an ex, because an ex, a, a somebody used to fuck with doesn't deserve a title, period. It's just that simple. We talked about this before. If you used to fuck with somebody, if you're a woman and you used to fuck with a nigga, that's not your ex-boyfriend. That's a nigga that you used to fuck with. If you're a man and you used to fuck a woman that you were in a quote-unquote relationship with, that's not your ex-girlfriend. That's a bitch that you used to fuck with. It's just that simple. Why give people titles that are not in your life anymore? Period. Ignoring how ridiculous and inefficient this was, and ignoring the fact that this is still a title, it was clear he was not handling her new relationship well, and was quite bitter about it. Over time, he also took to insulting her new boyfriend. This led to a back and forth situation. Alyssa wasn't talking about LTG or trying to upset him. She was just posting things about her life and her relationship to social media the same as millions of other people do every day. But those things would make their way back to LTG, who would respond in his usual hostile and insulting ways. And it became clear that the things he was saying were making their way back to her as well. During this period when LTG was insulting them, one of the things he said about her new boyfriend was that he was old. Eventually, the drama got to a point where Alyssa and her new boyfriend addressed the situation live on Instagram, directly responding to LTG's comment about her boyfriend's age. This is when things started getting interesting. You can't keep, you can't keep talking. Are you keep calling you an uh, old ass dude? You guys are the same age. You guys are the same age. Bro, In the clip, Alyssa dropped the info that LTG and her new boyfriend were the same age, and only a few months apart in terms of their birth dates. While she didn't come right out and say exactly what his age was, she had dropped a major hint. And as far as I'm aware, this was the first time any reliable insider info regarding his age had leaked out. As I discussed in my previous video, 
LTG has always been weird and evasive regarding his birthday and age, so when she made this comment, it definitely got people's attention. It didn't take long before people went online and figured out how old her boyfriend was, and one enterprising young troll named Trevor Belmont compiled all the evidence into a video that would show how old LTG should be. Despite all this, Dale would continue lying about his age, even bringing up Alyssa's comment when speaking to the political streamer Destiny in 2022, claiming it wasn't true, and effectively accusing her of lying. What, do you mind me asking how old are you? Or I don't know if you're probably that you don't have to say. Well, everybody thinks I'm 40 because I, I had an ex-girlfriend that tried to say I was a particular age, okay. but that's not true. Um, regardless of what people think, that's not true. There's, if I tell you personally, then everybody's gonna, I wanna keep some things mystique. How about I just DM you? Yeah, or no, you know what? You don't even have to tell me. I was just yeah. curious. But if everybody um, thinks I'm 40, then hey, we'll just say, fuck it, I'm 40. Sure, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, the, the only reason I asked is Just as a quick side note, his continued lies and denial about his age is the main reason why I made my previous video. For all the people that ever doubted her or believed him when he said she was lying, I figured, why not just show something official that couldn't be denied? But silly me. Of course, some idiots still deny it. That just goes to show you that some people are so brainwashed that nothing will ever convince them. Even when the proof is right there staring them in the face, they'll still invent some reason why they won't believe it. Anyway, along with the info about LTG's age, Alyssa would soon make another post on social media that would end up reframing almost everything people knew about them and casting LTG into a completely new light. It was a birthday post that mentioned how old she was, and if you took that info along with their anniversary date from the mukbang video, you could figure out how old they were when they got together. Credit to Simp Felon, who put all the evidence together and realized that based on their anniversary date, LTG would have been 29, and she would have been only 17 years old when they started their relationship. This is where the claims that LTG groomed a 17-year-old originate from. But we've only scratched the surface. Here's where things get strange. If we go back to the mukbang video, there's a part where Alyssa was very careful to state that the day that they call their anniversary wasn't their actual anniversary. It was the day they met. The time is coming around, and it was the day we met. I was, it wasn't our anniversary, it was the day we met. Every time that day comes around, I kind of like, we kind of like do something a little bit special. Of course, she neglected to mention that he was 29, and she was only 17 years old at the time. Or did she? Did you notice anything about that clip? You probably won't if it's your first time seeing the video, and I suspect even people that have seen it before probably won't catch it, so look again. I was, it wasn't our anniversary, it was the day we met. Every time that day comes around, I kind of... Did you notice the edit? There's a jump cut right after she says the day we met, and it's not from me, it was in the original video. Okay, so what? It's an edit, who cares? Well, let me explain. If you haven't seen the entire mukbang video before, it is about 25 minutes long, and it's basically an unedited vlog style, push record and take whatever you get type of video. Aside from some text at the very end that explains the camera battery died, it's just a long single take for 25 minutes, with the exception of two edits. Two edits in a 25 minute video. They're virtually unnoticeable unless you are looking for them. So why is this a big deal? because I am 99.9% .9 certain that edit was not there the first time the video was released. In fact, I have a very clear memory of Alyssa stating in this video that she was only 17 when they met. Now the first time I saw it, I didn't know anything about how old they were or when they got together, but even without knowing any of that, the comment about her age stood out to me because she was so young, even younger than I thought she was. Now, much later, and knowing how old he was and how large of an age gap there was between them. Imagine my surprise when I track down the video and go to the exact part where I remember it being. But instead of seeing that, I see an edit. My first reaction upon seeing this was to doubt myself. 
I had been trying to find the clip for a while, and I thought, well, I must have remembered it wrong. But then how is there an edit in the exact spot where I remember the comment being? That can't just be a coincidence, right? Again, there are only two edits in the entire 25 minute video, and the other is towards the very end. If that edit hadn't been there, then I would have just forgot about it and moved on. But obviously there was something there, and it's something he didn't want in the video. Otherwise, there wouldn't be any edit there at all. So what happened to the original clip? I think that LTG realized her comment wasn't a good look, or that it might end up being a problem for his career at some point. There were a lot of Me Too accusations and people getting cancelled at the time. So my guess is, he went into YouTube Studio, which allows content creators to edit a video that is already live on the platform. And now, instead of the part I remember, there's a tiny edit that few, if any, would ever notice. Of course, it's not any huge revelation that she was 17 when they met. The aforementioned simp felon had already figured that out in his video. So if that's the case, why is it a big deal if she also said it and he edited it out? The answer is because it shows he's trying to hide something, and that shows consciousness of guilt. This is a term that you might hear in court or in a legal context, and it means something that shows a suspect knows they are guilty. For example, destroying evidence, or leaving the country right after a crime was committed. Sometimes when the authorities have a suspect but they aren't sure about them, they will monitor them to see if they do anything that shows consciousness of guilt. Because if they're behaving like they're guilty, or like they have something to hide, it's usually because they are guilty and they do have something to hide. On a related note, now seems like a good time to remind everyone just how much he lies about his age. Now, as I mentioned, there was one other edit in the video. Here it is. Like, you guys think you guys hate him? Like, people who hate him? Y'all think you hate him? Oof, that is nothing compared to what, how I felt. Yeah. I wanted to destroy this man. Yeah. But. Almost did too, but. When? Please. Please. And how he would. How he would tell me, like on stream, how people would be like, he told her to shut the fuck up. Well, that's interesting. So she wanted to destroy him. Then he says, you almost did too. And after making some kookily faces at the camera, there's a cut. Again, this isn't a heavily edited video. Clearly, LTG doesn't want whatever they said in those two moments to be known to the public. However, unlike the first edit, I have no recollection of this part of the video and whether this edit was always there or if it was added later. So, let's talk about this. First, just to get it out of the way, the age of consent in California is 18 and there aren't any Romeo and Juliet laws which even if there were, they wouldn't apply because Romeo and Juliet laws only cover people a few years apart in age, not 12 years apart. But does this even matter? In the clip that I remember, Alyssa only said that she was 17 when they met. She didn't say they were dating or in a relationship when she was 17. But then why do they use the date they met as the date of their anniversary? That's not what people usually do. To be fair, Anniversaries don't have to be exact, and some people aren't always sure when to say a relationship officially started. Sometimes relationships just evolve over time, and a couple may choose a date to celebrate as their anniversary, even though they're unsure of when it truly was. But even when that happens, the date isn't going to be arbitrary. It's going to be relatively accurate. They're not just going to pick a random date. They will have an idea of approximately when it was, so it will be a reasonable guess within a range of maybe a week or two max. The only time I've known someone to use the day they met as the day of their anniversary is when both happened on the same date. If the relationship doesn't start until later on, who is even going to remember what day you met? So that's a little strange, but it gets even stranger. As I showed before, this info about how their anniversary wasn't really their anniversary comes from the mukbang video and it takes place right around the same time that I remember her saying she was 17 when they met. In fact, my recollection is that it was part of the same comment. She said something like, It's not really our anniversary, it was the day we met, because we actually met when I was still 17. 
which hinted at the idea that they couldn't be together then because she was still too young. At least, that was how I took it. Does that really make sense though? I thought it did at first. It seems like it provides some explanation for why they'd use the date they met as their anniversary. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought it doesn't make any sense at all. Why not just use the date when they did get together as their anniversary? Is that really so hard or confusing? If they waited until she was legal age to officially start their relationship or start dating, then their anniversary would have been on her birthday. Kinda easy to remember that date, isn't it? You're not gonna forget that your anniversary was the same day she turned 18 if you couldn't be together before that. Although technically an adult can date a minor as long as they're not having sex, because statutory laws only pertain to sexual consent, they don't cover dating or relationships. I realize how gross that sounds and I take no pleasure in saying it. The thing is, I don't think most people know that. I didn't know it myself until I started research for this video. I think most people are probably like I was and think it's illegal just to date a minor. The thing that is really strange about all this is how many times she mentions that their anniversary wasn't really their anniversary in that video. And bear in mind this all happens within the span of one minute. It was the day we met. I was, it wasn't our anniversary, it was the day we met. Every time that day comes around, I kind of like, we kind of like do something a little bit special. And so uh, it's not our anniversary because we weren't even together, but it was just the day we met. And so I kept asking him, I was like, when are you leaving? He was like, oh, I don't know yet, I don't know yet, blah, blah, blah. And so. Hold on, remember what she said. And mind you, uh, me and somebody in life always look at anniversaries unless they're married. It's something that was slightly corny, but that's just me, you know? So while she probably took it seriously, I can honestly admit and say, like, I didn't take it as a serious thing. Because I was just like, well, why do a million anniversaries and then you just end up not with a person? So that was my outlook on it. I was just like, more like we start anniversaries once we're in a year. Anyways, it wasn't our anniversary, it was the day we met. Now tell me, does that not seem weird to you? Why is this detail so important that it needs to be stated again and again and again in the span of a minute? To me, it comes across as a concocted story, and it seems like she is trying to cover for him. Repetition is a well-known sign that someone is lying, and in a context like this, it looks like the person is trying to convince both their audience and themselves of the lie. It's like the old saying about how it's not a lie if you believe it. They know it's not true, but they're trying to break through their own psychological barrier and believe the lie through repetition. There's even a name for this phenomenon, the illusory truth effect. And why wouldn't she lie for him? They were on good terms at the time the video was made, and she is probably smart enough to know that it wouldn't look good for someone his age to have dated a 17-year-old, especially not someone who's a pseudo-public figure. He may have even told her that when they talk about their relationship on stream, they need to say they didn't start dating until she was 18, because it's the type of thing that could hurt him and his career. For all we know, this is a shared lie that served as their official story. The story they told everyone else in their personal lives for the sake of keeping up appearances. I doubt her friends or family would have been keen on her dating an almost 30 year old when she was still 17 so she might have her own motivation to lie about it herself. I don't know, but this just sticks out to me like a sore thumb and I can't help but feel it's a sign of deception. In fairness, she would have been close to turning 18 when they met. Again, assuming what they say is true, then it would have been about three and a half months until she was legal from when they met. But that logic could just as easily go the other way, as in, well, it's only a few months until her birthday, she's practically 18 now. Do we really need to wait for some arbitrary date? Is she really going to mature that much in three and a half months where it's not okay now, but it will be okay then? Seems kind of pointless to wait, doesn't it? They say she's 16. I don't matter. You know, we'll, we'll edit it accordingly. I'll edit it accordingly. Yeah, she don't look 16, bro. And plus, no jumper posted her, so. <laughs> We have something here. I want to show the gloop game. I want to see what the gloop game looks like.
To state the obvious, I think the fact that he would pursue a relationship with someone that young when he was about to turn 30 is both creepy and inappropriate, and a strong sign that he lacks an understanding of what age-appropriate behavior is. They are 12 years apart in age, and she would have just graduated high school while he was about to turn 30. Even though they were both attending college at the same time, they should have been at very different places in their lives, and I could never fathom dating someone that young at 29. Going by the traditional formula of taking half your age and adding seven, his low end for appropriate dating would have been 22, and she was four years younger than that. The fact that he wasn't instantly bothered by it is creepy enough, but how the hell could you be in a long-term relationship with someone that young? This wasn't just a one-night stand or a booty call relationship. How can you relate to someone that's 12 years younger than you and literally fresh out of high school? That just shows a severe lack of development and immaturity on his part. And if my research is correct, he is actually closer to her mother's age. Of course, extreme immaturity is basically LTG's claim to fame, so dating a woman that's almost half his age is perfectly in line with what we know of him as a person. LTG is a lol cow, and one of the defining characteristics of lol cows is a total lack of self-awareness and maturity. Although LTG may set the record as the lol cow that's oldest in age, but youngest in terms of maturity. For years we have seen him act like an absolute man-child on stream, primarily when it comes to video games, which is itself a relatively immature and childish hobby. I'm not saying an older person can't play or enjoy video games, they absolutely can, but most see them for what they are, something that's supposed to be fun. They're not supposed to get you upset or make you lose your temper. Even people much younger than LTG understand this and can play games without having a literal breakdown when they lose. But somehow LTG is unable to do this, even now that he's on the threshold of turning 40. Video games are still very important to who he is as a person, and he takes them very seriously, despite his claims to the contrary. LTG predominantly plays competitive games, games where there's a clear winner and a clear loser, and much like a typical child, he is usually fine as long as he's winning. It's when he loses that he shows a severe lack of maturity and self-control, and being at best an average talent, losses occur quite frequently. He is the textbook definition of a sore loser, without any hint of good sportsmanship or etiquette, and he treats what should be a fun way to pass the time like it's a matter of life and death, acting like it has some tangible impact on his life. What's even more amusing is how he will constantly project onto others and criticize them for taking a game too seriously, when he's the 39-year-old adult ranting and raging every time he loses. He even takes it a step farther and claims he doesn't take games seriously, and then postures like he's so above it and so aloof, like video games are childish things that are so beneath him. But his cheap talk is betrayed by his actions, which plainly show that he's the one taking it too seriously. He is stuck in this bizarre performance where he is clearly upset and frustrated, yet he keeps insisting that he's not, both to save face with his audience and to cope with his own shortcomings and feelings of insecurity. A big problem appears to be the gap between how talented he sees himself compared to how talented he actually is, and when the two conflicting ideas collide, he suffers from extreme cognitive dissonance, which you can actually see happening in real time. Apparently, he can't accept or admit that he just isn't very good at video games, which again is pretty damn funny considering how much he claims he doesn't take them seriously or care about them. If you don't take them seriously, then why is it so hard to just admit you're not that good, and that's why you lost? We have heard endless excuses for why a loss wasn't his fault, and countless rationalizations to explain how he's still the better player, despite losing. We've heard all these excuses over the years and more, all except for the most obvious excuse, that he just isn't that good. It would be one thing if he were a professional gamer, competing at the top levels and earning money from his talents, similar to a professional athlete. You expect people like that to take games seriously and to take losing really hard, because to them it is more than just a game. But LTG isn't a pro. 
He's not even a high-level competitor, and people don't watch him to witness his skills or talents in a game the way they do with most gamer streamers. In fact, it's the complete opposite. People watch him to see him lose and to see him rage like an angry toddler. To see a 39-year-old who doesn't look like a typical gamer behaving like a crybaby that isn't getting his way. To put it another way, people watch to see an asshole that deserves to lose get exactly what's coming to them and then not handle it well. So, there's gonna come a point when you forget about what happened and you're gonna wanna come back at me and you're gonna wanna wash the taste of my dick out of your mouth. Now I know things like raging over video games wouldn't really seem to matter in the context of an adult man potentially grooming a minor. One thing is an amusing topic and one thing is rather serious, but I mention it to show just how stunted and immature LTG is, and I feel it's likely that the two things are correlated. When you look at it in aggregate, it's not that surprising that he would think it's appropriate to be in a relationship with someone so young. 17 years old is probably about where he is himself in terms of intelligence and maturity. That might even be giving him too much credit, honestly. It's also because that's the only kind of woman that would ever give him a chance. Someone too naive and inexperienced to know better. Normal women don't like immature men, not at any age, but definitely not in your 30s. They also don't like men that can't keep their composure especially over silly crap like video games. A woman his own age would instantly see through him and know what a chronic man-child he is. But someone young and naive would lack the experience to know how a grown man is supposed to act and would be more forgiving about his juvenile behavior because that's all they know. Maybe he could find an age-appropriate woman for a hookup where they don't need to be around you much or be seen with you in public, but a relationship? Yeah, right. Just like how men sometimes have someone they booty call when they're horny, but would never bring around their friends or family, LTG is the male equivalent of that. Can you imagine a woman introducing someone like him to their family, and then trying to explain what he does for a living? That he spends his evenings playing video games with teens online, screaming and raging at them all night long, while trying to get them to send him donations? Or better yet, Imagine a girl having to answer to their friends and family's concerns once they've gone online and seen some of the videos about him. Talk about an awkward situation. They'd probably tie her up and never let her talk to him ever again. That is, if she didn't already block his ass and tell him to delete her number. LTG is not any man or woman's idea of a suitable mate for their daughter. And I think he knows it, despite all his boastful talk about what an amazing guy he is. I said, that's why your box was always foul. I said, your shit was foul every time we f***ed around. That was, the, that was a different me, though. Like, me personally, if the relationship end now, I don't give two flying capital f***s. Like, you're at a disadvantage by not f***ing with me in the first place. Like, you're not going to find another guy like me, period. You're going to have to f*** with an NBA player to get somebody like me even to even come close in the first place. There's not too many six foot five attractive niggas like myself, so... Like, you're literally gonna have to get lucky to even touch this gene pool again. So any chick that I ever fuck with is always, a they always fucking with a downgrade after me in the first place, which is why most of the time they always come back because I'm one of a kind in the first place. These comments are like the IRL equivalent of the way he copes with video games. The way he insists he's the better player despite losing convincingly. Yeah, what a catch. A guy that is widely seen as a total clown who lives in a low-income area with an unstable income and very limited career potential that could be taken away from him in an instant. If he slips up and says the wrong thing on stream, who doesn't have good relationships with his family or his former girlfriends? Red flag. And who has endless videos of him in some of the most embarrassing moments all over the internet available for anyone to see. And this isn't even getting into his racist, homophobic, transphobic, and misogynistic comments. Yeah, I'd be thrilled if my daughter brought a guy like that home. Anyway, I think what this really boils down to is this. Is LTG a groomer 
and did he groom his ex-girlfriend? First, I hope everyone understands that grooming isn't a crime or a legal term. There's no law, religious or otherwise, that says thou shalt not groom people, and the police aren't going to come arrest a guy because they had a report of them grooming someone. They might arrest someone because they did something to someone that they groomed, but in terms of the actual law that was broken, it was the thing they did to them, not that they groomed them. Grooming is just a form of manipulation. It's how people gain the trust of someone when there's a large power imbalance and a typical relationship wouldn't be seen as acceptable. But manipulation isn't illegal. It may be unethical and immoral, but not illegal. Usually when people discuss grooming, they're talking about an adult grooming a child to engage in an inappropriate relationship. While this may be the most sinister form of grooming, it's not limited to this type of situation. Even adults are at risk of being groomed, and it's important to consider this when looking at the situation between LTG and his former girlfriend. Assuming he did begin grooming her when she was 17, I don't think it just ended the day she turned 18. I think it continued after that. Even though she was legally an adult, she was still very young, and she was likely very impressionable as well. From the article, Understanding Grooming in Adult Relationships, Similar to child grooming, grooming in adult relationships are all about control and dominance. Grooming is a form of manipulation that is often extremely difficult to spot when a person doesn't know what to look for. First, the groomer will attempt to build a friendship or emotional connection with a potential partner that will appear safe and genuine. As time goes on and connection and intimacy builds, the groomer will be slowly and covertly manipulating the victim of grooming to be dependent on them. One of the most successful ways to dodge adult grooming in intimate relationships is by knowing the red flags. When a person first meets a potential romantic partner, it can be helpful to make note of how fast the relationship is progressing. If it's moving faster than you are comfortable with, it's often a sign that your partner is attempting to gain trust or create a sense that their partner is so special and their love is so unique that it makes sense to move faster than usual. Like, I didn't really know what I was doing. This was like my first real relationship and we kind of moved very fast, in a sense. Yeah, we definitely did. Um, I think I, we moved in together after what, like a year of talking? Or was it less? It might have been, uh, we, it was like less. Another red flag is a groomer's desire for unconditional control. This can look like controlling what a partner wears, who they see, where they go, and what they do with their free time. Like, I would wear something cute. Well, I would wear something, like an outfit that was cute or something. I would be going somewhere, and he'd be like, I'm not going with you if you're wearing that. Yeah, trying to make her change. And I'd be like, but... why? And he'd just be like, cause, you know, it's provocative or is this or is that. I'm just like, dude, like, let me live. You're not my father. An aspect of grooming that could be its own separate topic is the matter of deception whether it's lying about your true intentions or disarming their concerns or hesitations. With that in mind, one thing that I often wonder about is if LTG might have lied about his age when they were first getting to know each other. She obviously knows now. She's the one that first talked about it in public while he was still trying to hide it. But was he always upfront with her about it? Most of us know how frequently he lies about his age these days and how he lies about a slew of other things too so it's clearly within his capacity to lie, especially about his age, and especially if he thought it might freak her out that he was so much older than she was. There is at least one thing we do know he lied about when he met her, his name. In an older video where they talk about how they met, Alyssa mentions how she had trouble finding him online because she didn't know how to spell his name. Find him and I tried to like look up his name and I couldn't, I didn't know how to spell Delon. In case you missed my last video, his real name isn't Dalon, it's Dale. So, he must have lied about his name to her, and again, we know he lies about his age constantly, among other things. So is it really a stretch to imagine he lied about it when they first met? There must have come a time when he told her his real name. He didn't just hide that info from her the entire time. So when he decided to tell her, did he also come clean about his age? 
Here, Alyssa talks about how they were both in college when they met. This is when I first started um, college. So I had like an early, early 8 a.m. class. And after my 8 a.m. class, I had a break from like 9.15. It was like 9 something all the way to 12.30. So I had like a three hour break in between my classes. And he would come to my school. I used to ditch my college. But yeah, he would come, he would ditch his class because he was going to school too at the time, but a different school. And he would ditch his class just to come hang out with me. Maybe he didn't truly lie about it, but I could easily see him doing the lie by omission thing, making her think he was younger than he was by saying how he was also in college and implying that he was in the usual age range of an undergrad, despite being much older than that. I am completely speculating about this, but again, it takes me back to this comment and what it might be about. Yeah. I wanted to destroy this man. Yeah. Honestly, this is so nonspecific that it could really be about any number of things. But lying to an underage girl about your own age so she wouldn't be weirded out, especially if they ended up dating or getting physical while she was still underage, would be a pretty serious thing. Of course, it's also possible that she lied about her age to him if she was close to turning 18 and about to start college when they met, then would she really telling a guy she was interested in that she was only 17? Who knows? Honestly, I could see either one and maybe even both being possible. There is actually more circumstantial evidence in support of this theory, but it will need to wait until another time. Now the astute ones out there may recall that when Alyssa first exposed LTG's age, she mentioned it was the same as her current boyfriend, which would mean they are the same difference in age that her and LTG were. So then, is her current boyfriend a groomer? I don't think so. While I think their age difference isn't ideal, it's much less of an issue the older someone gets. And her current boyfriend wasn't meeting her as a 17-year-old like LTG did, he was meeting her as a 24 or 25-year-old. That's the key difference. Despite being the same number of years apart, she was older, wiser, and more mature when she met him and I doubt she felt like she was being taken advantage of compared to an almost 18-year-old fresh out of high school girl. I think this is also why the dating age formula that I referenced scales as you get older, allowing a larger age gap the older you get. Not long ago, a famous streamer named Dream, who is actually famous, not Viewbot famous like LTG, was nearly canceled after he faced grooming accusations of his own. The claims ended up being almost completely bogus. His accuser alleged that when she was 17 and he was 22, they would flirt over DM, and then a month before she turned 18, they began sexting. Despite never actually meeting up in person, and even though Dream stated he thought she was 18, she was adamant she had been groomed by him, and initially, people seemed to believe her. Later, when asked for proof, none of the flirting or sexting was ever shown to have occurred and the DMs she provided showed they barely communicated at all, let alone about anything sexual. Now it seems like her accusations were entirely fabricated, but I'm left wondering, what if they hadn't been? What if her accusations had been legit? Would Dream have been canceled and labeled a groomer? It would seem so. There were many calling him that and demanding his cancellation in the immediate aftermath of the accusations. The issue wasn't whether what she alleged qualified as grooming or not. The issue was whether it even happened in the first place. So now let's look at what we know about LTG. He supposedly met this girl three and a half months before she was 18. And although they use this date as their anniversary, they claim that was just the day they met and they didn't officially get together until she was 18. My question is, if the dream accusations had been true, why would that be considered grooming but this not be? Because Dream is a famous streamer? That can't be the only thing that matters. Even in her fabricated story, they never actually met in person, and they were only five years apart in age. Alyssa and LTG did meet in person, even before she turned 18, and they were 12 years apart in age. In this clip, she mentions how the second time they met, he came and visited her after her college classes let out. This is when I first started um, college. So I had like an early, early 8 a.m. class. And after my 8 a.m. class, I had a break from like 
It was like 9 something all the way to 12.30. So I had like a three hour break in between my classes. And he would come to my school. I used to ditch my college. He used to ditch his class to come see me at 9 in the morning. 9 o'clock in the morning just to come see me. And then we would hang out at the park next to my school. And he would do that every single day. If you're wondering about the timeline here, they met August 3rd, 2014. Her first semester in college began two weeks later on August 18th. She wouldn't turn 18 until three months later. And she just said that he would ditch his own classes and come see her every single day. That means 29-year-old LTG is ditching his classes to go hang out with 17-year-old Alyssa every day for months before she turned 18. But they want us to believe that their anniversary was just the day they met not the day that their relationship more or less began. I'm not saying this was necessarily illegal. Like I mentioned before, they could have been dating during this period, and it wouldn't be illegal unless they were having sex. But it's still creepy and gross in my humble opinion, and it's not difficult to look at that as him grooming her. For the record, I want to make clear that Alyssa hasn't accused him of grooming her like Dream's accuser did, but I don't think she has to. Victims don't always know they're victims, and it's also not up to them to decide if they're a victim or not. That's not how it works. Besides, does it only count as grooming if the younger person makes a public accusation, or if they end up being upset about it once the relationship ends? If someone was groomed and they end up caring for the person that groomed them, whether they're still in a relationship or not, does that somehow change the fact that they were groomed? Imagine a minor that is groomed into a relationship that they continue into their adult years. Would we look at that and say she wasn't groomed because she doesn't agree and doesn't seem to care? Of course not. We would say they were groomed whether they agree or not, and whether they care or not. The question of if they were groomed isn't up to them. They can decide who to be with, and if they want to be with someone that arguably took advantage of them, then fine but it doesn't change the fact that they were groomed at one point. In fact, something like this actually happened back in 2021. And wouldn't you know it, LTG himself reacted to it on stream. Thank you for joining me. I got something crazy that I want to talk about that I've seen that was just astronomically abnormal. 55-year-old Mike, what's that say? Hog book? marries his goddaughter days after her 18th birthday and there's a picture with him holding her as a kid and then marrying her as an adult so if we really put this into perspective basically clearly what has been going on is some sort of statutory situation there had to have been some illegal and nasty shit going on that you can't really investigate because once somebody is legally 18 they can do what they want to do i mean look at this you look at this pic you're looking at somebody who groomed a little girl from who knows when of adolescent ages to exactly that's what i'm saying it's, it's grooming grooming groomed her from a a age that is completely unacceptable to an 18 year old literally being happy and ready and glorifying this marriage you said one is hers yeah this is crazy man yeah it's just yeah i can't imagine this so it's saying that many on social media are claiming what we already just talked about so mike has not explained the timing of the relationship um, nor has he explained his followers that the newlywed relationship changed from parental to romantic. Yeah, that's just a real nasty situation. I think there's a video of her like cousin. See, he says himself that the girl was groomed, even though she disagrees. Keep in mind that as far as we know, nothing illegal took place in that story, even though we would all speculate otherwise. As far as we know, and as far as the couple is claiming, it was all above board. I'm not saying this is on par with what LTG did. Obviously, there's a lot of differences in that story. That guy was the godfather of the girl and had known her much longer than LTG knew Alyssa. He was also much, much older than she was, and they went straight to marriage 
not a relationship. The point is, it doesn't matter if someone is happy in their relationship, and it doesn't matter if someone agrees whether they were groomed or not, everyone else is looking at it from the outside and saying, yes, he groomed that girl no matter what she thinks or says about it. Now, I may be wrong, but it seems like Alyssa doesn't want to blow up LTG's life or throw any high-profile accusations at him. At least, not anymore. Yeah. I wanted to destroy this man. Yeah. Maybe she still cares about him deep down and doesn't want to damage his life or his career. Maybe she doesn't want the drama and attention that comes with making those kinds of accusations publicly. Maybe she just wants to move on with her life and let sleeping dogs lie. Then again, maybe she doesn't. Back when Simp Felon made his video that showed LTG and Alyssa met when she was 17, he ended it with a screenshot of a post from her Instagram. In the post, she was resharing a comment from another user that said, I don't know what high school girl under 18 needs to hear this, but that grown man doesn't think you're mature for your age. Women his age just see the bum in him, and he's a predator. Tell on him. Below that, Alyssa added on her own comment, which said, Wish I knew this earlier. Frowny face emoji. Gee, I wonder who she's referring to. So maybe she does feel differently about things now. And maybe she did want to make at least a subtle comment about it. Looking back at everything in context, I think it all makes perfect sense. When she first met LTG, she was a young, inexperienced, naive girl fresh out of high school. And like most young girls, she was probably flattered that an older guy gave her attention, thought she was pretty, thought she was worthy of being in a relationship with, or that she was mature for her age, or whatever dumb compliments older men use on girls when they're hitting on them. Now that she is older and wiser to the kinds of things men do to take advantage of younger women, or just women in general, she probably feels embarrassed or even disgusted that she fell for that crap and whatever her feelings may be about how she was treated during their relationship. She probably resents that a guy his age preyed on someone as young as she was and took advantage of her youthful ignorance. I don't know if she would call it grooming, but I sure would, and I think I've shown that most people would as well. But hey, don't just take my word for it. In researching this video, I ended up finding a true authority on this subject, someone with relentless experience and expertise in the field. You might even call this person a scholar when it comes to the subject of grooming. And I managed to find a clip of them describing a scenario that is eerily like the situation between LTG and Alyssa. In the following clip, this grooming scholar is talking about the music artist Drake, who in 2018 was being accused of creepy and potentially inappropriate relationships with underage girls, including his latest girlfriend who had just turned 18. And just a quick note that Drake was 31 at the time. So what I think Drake is doing, right? How it's going around that he's grooming women. 100% true, King Tut. What he's doing is he's going around grooming young women or young girls that are going to evolve into women at a certain point in time in their life. Drake is a man that has had sex with numerous, maybe even thousands of women. So it has to come a point, has to come to a point at where it has, has had come to a point. It's just where we're at now. Um, Drake has got tired of fucking adult women who are ran through. Promiscuous adult women, I would like to say. Drake has fucked or fornicated, had sex, whatever you guys would like to call it, with numerous women. When does it give when you run into tarnished pennies over and over and over and over again to the point where it intrigues you, where you groom something that's a little younger. You groom something, you you coach, you develop a woman into your liking without engaging in any type of sexual contact, but sort of mentally grooming that woman who is untouched and untainted into the world, a non-tarnished penny. You ever just took a dirty penny and tossed it away? And then you see a shiny penny and you want to keep it and you want to save it. 
that's how Drake feels about women that are tarnished. Most women that you run into are going to be tarnished pennies. It is very rare to find. It is very rare to see in general a penny that is brand new. Most pennies you see are dirty, ugly, disgusting. You see them on the floor, you kick them. It means absolutely nothing. Even if it comes making your cents into a perfect dollar, you don't want it because it's not a shiny, fresh copper penny. You're dealing with a tarnished penny. Drake got tired of dealing with tarnished pennies, probably not even having sex right now, and denouncing it because he's bored. He's bored of dealing with a handful of tarnished pennies, toss them away, say, you know what? I want that one shiny, brand new penny, and I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep that in my pocket for years, for four plus years, if I have to. And then when that penny is, is at its prime age or prime date, I'm going to take that penny and cherish it. Now, if you did not understand that, I feel sorry for your brain. I feel sorry for your IQ. I feel sorry for your non-thinking outside the box mentality. But then again, I can't blame you because 95% of humans on the planet Earth do not think outside the box, which is why you were labeled weird for something as simple as believing in extraterrestrial life. Well, there it is. Now, if LTG wants to dispute any of this, he can go right ahead and try. Start by explaining what's in those two edits in the mukbang video and why they were edited in the first place. If I'm right about what I remember, why edit her saying that she was only 17 when they met if they didn't start dating until she was 18? Why go to the trouble of making that edit if you didn't do anything wrong? Or maybe he could explain why they used the date they met as their anniversary instead of the day they became a couple, the way most people do. If that wasn't their true anniversary, then when was it? Was it the day she turned 18? Was it later than that? Set the record straight. Then again, if my memory about what she said is wrong, then I'll gladly eat crow about it. But I need to see the actual footage, because Dale's word means absolute bub kiss to me. Through each of my videos, I've shown how often he lies, and I fully expect him to lie about this too. Thing is, even if I was wrong and she never said she was 17 in the mukbang video, it wouldn't change much because it's already been established by Simp Felon. Her mention of it in the mukbang video would just be further corroboration. Of course, Dale would still need to explain why he edited it out in the first place, and I don't think he will ever do that. Obviously, there is something there, because otherwise there wouldn't be any edits. I won't hold my breath, though. Dale doesn't have a great track record when it comes to telling the truth. So, this was supposed to be the end. But obviously it's not. When I wrote the script for this video, I felt like this was the note I wanted to end on. It seemed like a satisfying conclusion that tied everything together, and I said everything I wanted to say. However, when I watched the final edit, I wasn't satisfied with the ending. It felt like something was still missing. I couldn't figure out what it needed, but I had this strong gut feeling that it needed something more, and I would rather sit on the video than put it out prematurely. I thought if I was just patient, whatever I was looking for would eventually come to me. Remember at the beginning of the video, when I mentioned that recent events had made me realize that this was a more serious topic than I originally thought, and that I changed the style of the video so that it would have the serious tone that it deserved? At one point, I showed this clip on screen, which was a subtle hint of what I was talking about. The girl in this video is a Twitch streamer that goes by the name Connie Rosie. I really don't know much about her other than that at some point around the middle of last year, she began popping into LTG's stream when she wasn't streaming herself. Since Dale is a tremendous simp, 
Anytime there's a woman in his chat, he gives them special attention. But being a streamer that he can clout chase off of, just took it to a whole other level. So for the last few months, Connie has been a frequent member of his chat, and Dale has been constantly simping for her and letting her get away with anything when other people get banned just for laughing. Some LTG trolls actually like her, because she will occasionally talk back to Dale and as I said, she's the only one that can get away with it. Anyone else gets banned instantly. But from what I've seen it seems like she really likes him, and only talks back to him in a flirty, friendly way. So one day I'm just browsing YouTube as I often do, and I get recommended a video called Low Tier God Lies to Connie Rosie about his age. And since exposing Dale's lies, especially about his age, is something of a hobby of mine, of course I was curious enough to click the video. Lo and behold, imagine my shock and surprise when I see this. He's 39? Uh, no. <laughs> I know his actual age. Not, he's not 39. Okay. Like I said, all the rumors I've been, I've heard, like, like I said, me being groomed, him abusing me, all these things, him we were secretly dating. He's four years old. I've seen, I've, I've seen everything. Le like, the real deal. Okay, I've seen proof. Dude is not. He's far from 40. Okay. Far from 40. The age, no, no, it's, it's, it's a rumor, okay? I asked him myself, I'm like, oh, is it true? And he was like, no, and then he explained it to me, and I'm like, oh, okay. And I was like, well, I mean, even if you were 40, that would be pretty crazy. Yeah, that would be pretty crazy, wouldn't it? How about it is pretty crazy? It's even more crazy that you would just take the word of a compulsive liar like that, and then help spread his lies to other people. So... Where do I even begin with this? Apparently, Dale is not 39, and according to her, she's seen proof. Proof? Like a birth certificate, perhaps? Yeah, right. People are literally spamming her chat and mentioning my name and my video, telling her it's not a rumor. His actual birth certificate is right there for her to see. All she has to do is look for it, and she just sits there, as stupid and defiant as children often are insisting it's just a rumor and that she's seen proof. No, Connie, you haven't seen proof. Proof is what I provided in my video. Unless he showed you a fake ID or something, which I doubt, then you haven't seen fuck all. And I think she cops to this herself when she says he explained everything to her. Oh, well then, if he explained it, then it must be true. It's not like this guy has ever lied about his age before. And I love how she denies that he's trying to groom her. Of course, no one ever thinks they're being groomed when it's actually happening. It's like the old saying, it's easier to fool someone than it is to convince them they've been fooled. So as I'm sitting there trying to wrap my head around how stupid and naive she is, that's when I realize that I'm totally burying the lead here. And this was the thing I had been waiting for. This was the real finale that the video needed. As ignorant as her comments are, they're not the important part of the video at all. The important part is that right now in 2024, at 39 years old, LTG is lying to young girls about his age and claiming he is much younger than he actually is. This is not just something he does because he's insecure or embarrassed about his age. He's doing it because he's actively trying to deceive women, in all likelihood so he can lure them into some kind of relationship that they wouldn't otherwise consent to if they knew his real age. Here I was making a video about how he probably did this to a girl 10 years ago. And here he is doing it to another young girl right before our very eyes. And she just admitted it on stream. This poor girl is already a victim and doesn't even know it. And just like many victims, she's trying to defend her abuser by repeating his lies. So, what the hell is with this guy? He clearly has a problem, both with lying in general, but especially when it comes to lying about his age. Once I saw that he is still doing this creepy behavior, that's when I realized just how serious this was, that it wasn't just a one-time thing that would make a funny video, it's a recurring, ongoing issue that needs serious attention. How many other girls has he lied to over the years? How many is he lying to right now at this very moment? What else is he lying to them about? 
I mean, say what you want about older men dating younger women. I think it's gross, but as long as they are consenting adults, then fine, whatever. But when you actually lie to them about your age, actively misleading them like that, that's beyond gross in my opinion. And to me, that means they're not consenting because they aren't making an informed decision. They're being deceived. I want to remind everyone that this is coming from the same guy that preaches how confident and arrogant he is and what an amazing catch he is, how after dating him, every other guy is a downgrade. Well, last I checked, catches don't lie about their age or mislead people about who they really are. That also doesn't strike me as something a confident person would do. And it's pretty funny how Connie even denies he's grooming her while in the very next breath regurgitating his own lies about his age, just like a victim that's been brainwashed by her abuser. Yeah, Connie, he's totally not trying to groom you. He's lying to you for some other reason. And now, by spreading his lies across the internet via your own platform, you're actually helping him deceive other women. Great job. I'm sure he appreciates it. So at this point, I really don't know what else to say, other than, I think it's clear that this guy has a serious problem, and he is 100% a lying creep that manipulates and grooms young women. At least he tries to. I don't know how successful he is, but I think it's clear that's what his goal is. And you just heard him defend the entire concept of grooming when he was talking about Drake. So from his perspective, he's not even doing anything wrong. Sick fuck. When I said earlier that the reason he always lies about his age was because he likely groomed a 17-year-old when he was 29, that was only half the story. The other half is that he's still out there trying to groom other young, naive girls, and he doesn't want any of them knowing how old he really is. And now we have undeniable proof of it. Good thing too, because certain people are really big sticklers for things like proof and evidence. I've seen everything, like, the real deal. Okay, I've seen proof. Um, like I said, I don't, I don't take that shit lightly. You're gonna be making a video of me, and you better be adding some of your content, your voice, okay? And actually back up your shit with the actual concrete evidence. You know, not... <laughs> not an out-of-context clip. <laughs> I feel like I'm taking fucking crazy pills watching this shit. You want proof? Well, it's right here. And on top of that, here's another video full of evidence for you, sweetie. Hope I put enough of my own voice and my own content in here for you. Now how about you show us the evidence that he's not 39? Put up or shut up, and practice what you preach. Anyway, this man needs to be stopped. It's honestly disturbing that he is still out there lying like this when he is about to turn 40, and the truth is out there for anyone to see. Yet he just can't stop himself from lying it's like it's a compulsion or something. As I said, I think it's pretty gross if he wants to hit on these younger girls, but he absolutely needs to stop lying to them. Don't misrepresent yourself as something you're not. That is fucking gross. And on that note, stop claiming you're so confident and arrogant when you constantly lie about yourself. You're no confident, motivated, mentally untouchable man with a god complex. You're a lazy, fragile, bitter, emotional, mentally delusional man-child with an inferiority complex. No one that is truly comfortable in their own skin needs to lie like that, and no decent guy that is really a catch needs to deceive women, so cut the bullshit, Dale. You're obviously insecure and trying to cover it with all this talk about how confident you are, and it's pathetic. You talk about it because you can't be about it. But talk is cheap and actions speak louder than words. Don't deny the truth that's right in front of you. And if you know of someone engaging in creepy, deceitful behavior, don't just let it slide. Tell on him.
Shang Tsung wins. Babality.